Oh, hi, I'm the heretic. So I have been asked, hey, heretic, why don't you start a voluntarist political party? The problem is apparent right off the bat. The purpose of a political party is for people to come together and decide for what causes they're going to spend other people's money. What we want is a society where all relationships are voluntary, without any coercion or force. Forming a political party means abandoning our principles, as the state is an institution of force that imposes its will onto people and requires them to pay taxes. This is an inherently involuntary relationship, because if people would pay taxes voluntarily, it wouldn't be called taxes, any more than you buying groceries is taxation paid to the grocery store. If you decline to pay, the government will escalate force against you until you either comply or die. Your relationship with the government is involuntary, and embracing a political party, even one that you create, telegraphs belief that the initiation of force in certain situations is justified. Political parties are only useful when you want to alter things within a current, involuntary, and unjust system. Distaste for Alexander Hamilton's National Bank formed the Democratic Republican Party, no relation to modern parties, for example. The only way to subvert a party is with either enormous popular support, such as pietist dominion over the Republican Party prior to the Progressive Era, who wanted to use the state to enforce morality and impose alcohol prohibition and public schooling. Alternatively, you can be J.P. Morgan and simply buy your candidates into office. But this requires an extraordinary amount of time and resources, whether purchased or popular. Either way, if voluntarists were able to accomplish either possibility, then achieving a voluntary society would not require voting, as people would simply exchange on the black and gray markets on untraceable crypto exchanges, completely tax-free. Let's not also forget that the Democratic Republicans, then the Pietists and Morganites, hell, even the pirate parties of Europe, who embrace civil libertarianism and development of open source technology, all have one thing in common. They want a state. In the Pirate Party's case, they advocate for direct democracy or e-democracy, which is simply mob rule. This brings up an interesting question. What happens when people who completely lack this fundamental commonality and reject the state entirely ask for a seat at the table? I did a video not long ago about how the EU is voting away Hungary's voting privileges in the EU. You don't have the right to vote. If people can just vote your vote away, do you, dear viewer, honestly think they will allow anyone who doesn't think their priesthood should even exist anywhere near their high temples? Of course not. That'd be like if the Catholic Church thought there weren't enough anti-theists in the College of Cardinals. Dear Shane Killian, you might be able to convince Pope Francis of a new way to make the Catholic Church more inclusive. A actually, please don't. Francis would probably do that. Let's not also forget the incentives in place. Power corrupts. Absolute power corrupts absolutely. And who has more power than the men who give themselves the ability to live at someone else's expense? It's not because they're bad people, but the temptation that power provides will attract bad people. And when people's livelihoods, their careers, their children and grandchildren's future depends on said system, they'll defend it no matter how corrupt it is. And the bad people who will be attracted to this kind of power will not care how corrupt it is. People go into, say, Congress, and they're going to do right by the American people. They'll do whatever it takes to, if not abolish the state, then to at least shrink its power. So this person's a voluntarist and they win the election. Yay! Congratulations, Senator. However, his colleagues, people he knows to be corrupt assholes, then come up to him and say that they will help him shrink the government. Absolutely. They agree with everything he said. But first, they need his support for this one piece of unethical and suspiciously nonspecific regulation that's going to give the government more control over people's lives. What is our dear Senator going to do? stand by his principles and accomplish nothing, or help with that legislation with the promise that he might be able to get something done later down the road. The choice might seem clear, stand by your principles, but who's to say someone else, more ruthless, isn't willing to make that deal that actually sets you back? 
If you don't make the deal to support that one piece of legislation, someone else will. Question is, how many more of these one pieces will be asked for? You can see where this is going. You become the creature of government whose career and future depends on stolen money and you sunk too much of your life and energy into this. You are in a situation where the expansion of the state benefits you financially and directly. Absolutely, you can abolish the state. All that's being asked of you is your soul. There is no configuration of a party system that will be able to circumvent this reality. No matter how glorious or idealistic their foundation, people are going to respond to incentives. The kinds of incorruptible angels who appear once in a generation cannot be relied upon. Even they are simply one person, and nobody has ever changed the world alone. So you can see by now, operating through party politics is not only a violation of voluntarist principles, but voluntarists will be barred from voting, and even if they aren't, they'll inevitably come to support the statist status quo. But let's be fair, the unspecified individual I was talking to wasn't suggesting we try and change the system from within or anything like that. Rather, that we can use the system of party politics as a platform to spread our ideas into mainstream politics. Now this makes a lot of sense. After all, there are a lot of libertarians and voluntarists who got into it because of what they heard Ron Paul say in the 2012 or 2016 Republican presidential primary debates. Thus, doesn't it make sense to get a hold of the political platform to spread our message? Problem is that party machines will scarcely allow outsiders who won't work for the benefit of the machine to have any support. You can see this in the way the Republican Party rallied around Mitt Romney in 2012 and John McCain in 2008. We can go further back, Bob Dole, CIA stooge, George H.W. Bush, and more. More recently, the Democrat Party railroaded Bernie Sanders out of the presidential primary in 2016. So at the very least, it's an uphill battle. And you can forget about appearing in general presidential election debates, since the Commission of Presidential Debates, a supposedly nonpartisan, non for profit who manages the presidential debates during an election, requires a candidate get at least 15% support in at least five major polls. If a voluntarist candidate can get 15% requisite support, then we don't need the presidential debate to get his message out. I didn't even mention the kind of tribalism that parties inspire. Now, political philosophies and ideologies also inspire tribalism, and there are a lot of people who learn the principles of a philosophy after they identify with them, but at least they're learning principles. What principles do the Republican Party stand for? The Democrats? I could tell you what Libertarians stand for, but not what the Libertarian Party stands for. Nobody's going to know what a hypothetical voluntarist party stands for, and like the Libertarian Party, it will become an embarrassment and an impediment to being able to explain our ideas. Thing is, it isn't impossible to get the message out by using the priesthood of statism's own mechanisms against them, but it is an uphill battle, and only a handful of us at a time could ever pursue it. Assuming we could even keep the courage of our convictions and mental fortitude to avoid becoming the very thing we seek to destroy. Even if, hypothetically, voluntarists were able to achieve a majority in Congress, hell, even the presidency, we'd still be right back where many of our fellow people are today, praying to the state to fix our problems for us. We're not going to solve the problem of the state by embracing the state. We live in a day and age where we don't need anyone's permission to spread the word. We have more ways to communicate our ideas than ever before, and the notion that we need to participate in a fundamentally unethical system to do so just isn't true. If we put half as much effort into talking to people we know, family, friends, co-workers, about these ideas, as we would have to put the effort in to get freedom-loving, incorruptible angels into government office, then we could be free tomorrow. Questions? Comments? Critique? How many people do you talk to about these ideas? When was your last black or gray market transaction? Leave a comment below, but feel free to leave out the details of your transaction. Support me on Patreon. Like, 
share, and subscribe to become a Heretic today.